Uh, my name is Michael Scott. I'll be moderating uh, this session uh, on um, kind of some of the other non-earthquake, non-liquefaction, uh, or non-earthquake related uh, hazards uh, that the peer projects are uh, addressing uh, through the proposals that were funded uh, uh, back in uh, late last year. Okay, um, <clears throat> so uh, the first talk is uh, from Cameron Namadi. Uh, he had to uh, unexpected travel come up, so he's not here. Uh, and since I'm the moderator of the session, uh, he uh, asked me to present his work. Uh, maybe he's worried that uh, if there's no presentation, there will be a uh, uh, cut off of funding or uh, something like that. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll do my best to um, talk about something that I only uh, heard about yesterday. Uh, I'm just going to basically read slides. I won't really be able to answer questions uh, or anything. Um, and then we'll have a, a talk uh, by Ian Williams, uh, who's working with Professor Ostertag on environmental effects on bridge columns. And then the third presentation in the session is uh, from Minji Zhu on uh, Python capabilities in open seas uh, and uh, fluid structure interaction. Okay. So uh, on behalf of uh, Cameron, uh, and Alessandro Fantilli. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, how water binder ratio and voids uh, affect performance of hardened concrete subjected to fire. Okay, uh, and it's really a shame my colleague uh, Erica Fisher's not here. She's the fire expert from uh, Oregon State, uh, but she just got married and is on her honeymoon. Uh, so I'll try to uh, represent the fire expertise of, uh, of Oregon State uh, as best I can uh, by making this proxy uh, presentation. Okay, so um, <clears throat> Erica has a peer project, so she should have been here, but uh, she's not. Okay, so outline. Um, four questions that were, are going to be uh, answered through this research um, will be summarized. Uh, look at concrete specimens that were tested uh, under different uh, mixes and uh, temperature loadings, uh, compression tests on those specimens, some fire tests and then conclusion and uh, future work, okay? So four research questions uh, to be answered with this, this project uh, funded by PEER. Uh, what are the effects of water to cement ratio and voids on the mechanical performance and compression of concrete? That's the first question. Uh, what are the effects of uh, water to cement ratio and voids on mass loss after fire? So as uh, concrete is subjected to fire, it tends to lose mass. Uh, lose volume. I assume that's uh, what's going on here. All right. Again, for those of you just walking in, I'm giving a presentation uh, on somebody else's behalf, okay? Uh, all right. And I haven't looked at water cement ratios since I was uh, uh, a junior in uh, college. All right. Okay. Um, third question, can we predict the mass loss only by means of uniaxial compression tests? And then finally, can artificial voids within the mixture uh, substitute the polypropylene fiber in reducing the mass loss after fire? Okay. So concrete mixtures, uh, 12 mixtures uh, were proposed with different water to cement ratios ranging from 0.3 to 0.5, and then different void percentages ranging between 5 and uh, 15%. Uh, as well as a volume of polypropylene fibers that are added uh, to the mix. Mm -hmm. Th this is what concrete mixture people do, right? They uh, sprinkle cheese dust into their mixtures and then uh, uh, crush some cylinders, right? And uh, write 80 papers about it. Right? Uh, okay, all right. So 12 different batches were required. Tailoring, which I believe is, you know, how the mixtures came about, like tailoring clothes. Uh, I think that was Cameron's intent here. Uh, spreadsheet concrete mix calculation. I don't know if this is available uh, for use, um, but that's what's going on there. Specimens, uh, cylinders, five cylinders for each mixture. So I guess 60 specimens total, or 60 cylinders total. Standard size, eight inch height, uh, four inch diameter. Uh, tested in uniaxial compression, uh, and then also under fire simulation. Okay. okay, compression tests. I think we've all busted cylinders if you went through an ABET accredited uh, civil engineering program in the U.S. You probably busted a cylinder. All right, but uh, you measure, take the force, divide by the area. Uh, you get the uh, stress-strain behavior and compression. 
Okay. This is a quasi-static displacement control test, uh, at a very slow rate of uh, 1.5 milli-inches uh, per minute, and then measure the stress strain curve uh, therein. Okay. And of course, uh, from those tests, uh, you can determine basic things like the material strength, Fc, or F prime C, uh, and uh, ductility, uh, A sub F. All right. And I'm not, again, uh, I'm not familiar with this research, uh, but the, the definition of ductility um, probably varies a little bit from what we as uh, structural engineers uh, think of as ductility. But it is a, a concrete property uh, that can be measured uh, through uh, compression tests. Okay, so uh, compressive strength. So as a function of air content, um, so as air content and or the water cement ratio increase, the strength uh, decreases, so the general downward trend uh, on these uh, plots. Uh, each, each data series is for different, or the four different water cement ratios, one with fiber, uh, one without, and then uh, two different ratios of uh, 0.4 and 0.5. Please don't ask me to uh, go any further into those details or those results. Um, and then in terms of ductility, that A sub F, uh, that also decreases with air content, uh, but tends to uh, increase with water, water to cement ratio. Right. Um, and then some similar behaviors uh, for uh, WC 0.3 with fibers and W over C 0.4, uh, of course, without fibers. So these results were intended to answer the, the first question, um, you know, what were the effects of water cement ratio and voids? All right, so as expected, uh, concrete strength uh, increases when air content and water to cement ratio decreases, uh, regardless of the fiber content. So the polypropylene fibers uh, didn't make a, a difference. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the ductility decreases with air content, but increases with W over C. All right. Um, and then there's very little effect on ductility uh, with respect to water to cement ratios. Okay. Fire tests, <coughs> we're done. Uh, so there's a temperature time curve uh, there. So as, as time increases, uh, the temperature is increasing very rapidly and then kind of stabilizes at around 11,000 to 1100 degrees Celsius. Uh, two cylinders from each mixture exposed to fire. Measured the mass loss of the cylinders after fire exposure. I suppose just by weighing in before and weighing in after. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong uh, on that. Okay. Uh, the tests were conducted at WPI. That's the, the oven they were put into, or the fire chamber. Um, results, mass loss remains more or less constant. Air content uh, varies. And then the effect of fibers uh, doesn't change the behavior significantly. So the answer to the second question, the effect of voids and water cement ratio, um, you know, mass loss does not decrease as air voids increase. So this uh, sounds, looks like it's a, uh, one of the findings, preliminary findings of this research. Okay. Um, in addition, the better the quality of the concrete, i.e. the higher strength or lower or higher W over C, lower the mass loss. Right. Some more plots. Um, mass loss decreases with F prime C, mass loss increases with ductility. Okay. Uh, see the, the data points over there and the uh, regression line just plunged right through them. Okay. Uh, answer the third question. Well, uh, predicting the mass loss only by means of uniaxial compression tests. Yes, we can. Um, uh, mass loss decreases with increasing strength and increases with uh, ductility. And these uh, can be measured through standard uniaxial uh, compression tests. Okay. In terms of the fourth question, um, can artificial voids substitute the polypropylene fiber in reducing the mass loss after fire? Um, it's only apparently only related to mechanical properties, the concrete rather than the content of the fibers. And I'm not sure 
here the best concrete should have the highest strength and the lowest uh, ductility. Uh, and we could probably spend the rest of the day talking about what's the best concrete uh, uh, in this room, but uh, that was one of the uh, the answers to the, the question. So future work, those are preliminary findings. Uh, future work uh, deals with you know further uniaxial compression tests and then of course going from uh, lab scale uh, or specimens in the lab uh, to testing on or performing some kind of in-situ test uh, on uh, full-scale structures. Um, so um, yeah, I think that's that's it. Uh, I won't be able to answer any real questions unless it's clerical. Um, but again, uh, Cam Cameron wanted me to emphasize that uh, the the findings uh, are good. You know, some things contrary to what was expected, but also very still very preliminary. Uh, so um, you know, not not definitive yet, but. Uh, the future work should address uh, resolving, uh, further resolving and clarifying those findings. Okay, okay so any, any questions? Uh